welcome to sims med prep dr kamran khaja is here uh, this is a continuation of lecture uh, of neurology and today we will discuss about the second lecture of pharmacology so this is a continuation of pharmacology lecture series and in this lecture we will be discussing about the pharmacology i hope welcome to sims med prep dr kamran khaja is here i hope all the students are here and uh, uh, they will be commenting and please let me know if you want to ask any question from the previous lecture of our uh, first lecture of neurology okay so please let me know if any person have any question regarding the previous lecture okay any question please let me know if you have any question from the last pharmacology lecture series so this is a continuation of our next lecture which is a second lecture of pharmacology this is our second lecture of the pharmacology please comment your name who is here in the lecture okay please comment your name thank you dr ramana is here thank you okay thank you dr ramana Waalaikum assalam, Dr. Ramana. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hamza is here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rab Nawaz is here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Marwa. Thank you, Muhammad Ahmed. Excellent. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, guys. Please let me know if you have any question from the previous lecture. If you do not understand any of the concept from the previous lecture, please let me know. okay thank you welcome welcome okay i will ask few of the questions from you and you will tell me the answer okay so let me ask some questions thank you welcome dr khatija okay uh, let me tell let me ask few of the questions a person presented with a history of generalized tonic clonic seizures okay generalized tonic clonic seizures plus there is a history of epilepsy in this patient so what will be the first medication you will use what is drug of choice in this patient 
ओके वेलकम डॉक्टर फरान एक्सीलेंट तो वट इज द फर्स्ट मेडिकेशन यू विल यूज इन जर्नलाइज टोनिक क्लोनिक सीजर्स विद हिस्ट्री ऑफ एपिलेप्सी Okay, so what will be your first medication in this case? ओके लेट मी सी मिडेजोलाम थैंक यू एक्सीलेंट डॉक्टर नूर वेलकम ओके द आंसर जस्ट आमना डॉक्टर आमना सेड देयर आमना आंसर अमाना सॉरी डॉक्टर अमाना आंसर इज मिडेजोलाम एनी अदर आंसर द फर्स्ट मेडिकेशन यूज फॉर जनलाइज टोनिक्लोनिक सीजर हिस्ट्री ऑफ एपिलेप्सी एज वेल so i can give you the options the first medication is from the benzodiazepine as dr ramana said midazolam this is a first option second option you will consider uh, for barbiturates and third option is the valproic acid valproic acid and the fourth option is the levetiracetam so what is the medication that you will use in this case ओके वेल प्रोक आंसर इज फ्राम द डॉक्टर अमाना डॉक्टर फरहान इज सेंग वेल प्रोक एसिड डॉक्टर खतीजा इज सेंग वेल प्रोक एसिड ओके वेन देयर इज अस्ट्री मोस्ट लाइकली वेन यू हैव द केस लाइक दिस वेन देयर इज अस्ट्री ऑफ एपिलेप्सी एज वेल बेन्जोटाइज अपीन आर मोस्ट लाइकली यूज फॉर एक्यूट मैनेजमेंट ओके सो बेन्जो is mostly for the acute management and the maintenance management long term management for the long term as a person has epilepsy and long term generalized tonic clonic the preferred medication is the valproic otherwise there is no contraindication and next we have already discussed in our previous lecture as well okay what is the other medication that is used for the long term and chronic we have discussed of course there is another medication we discussed other side the valproic acid there was another medication sometime you always see in your clinical setting that in chronic cases there is a different medication but acute cases the benzo is the use okay you can think about the valproic acid excellent thank you for all the answers Uh, benzo is not the wrong answer but it is mainly used acutely okay thank you so much guys let me ask the another question what is drug of choice for absent seizures drug of choice of the absent seizure this is very important question it is super easy and super important super easy question and super important question whenever they gave you history of child a child okay the child who was just watching his favorite tv and accidentally he was unable to respond while watching his favorite tv and this started seizures activity and after that the what is most important drug that is etosexomide okay excellent okay thank you so much dr khatija excellent dr amana thank you
डॉक्टर फरहान थैंक यू माय क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नाउ हु विल टेल मी अबाउट द नेम ऑफ द ड्रग द नेम ऑफ द ड्रग दैट इज यूज फॉर द माइग्रेन प्लस एंटीसीजर्स name of the drug who used as migraine anti seizure and weight loss what is the name of the medication used for migraine anti seizures and weight loss डॉक्टर अमाना एक्सीलेंट डॉक्टर अमाना यू आर एक्सीलेंट स्टूडेंट टूडे आई हैव टू से हेयर यू डिजर्व माय एप्रिसिएशन एज वेल अ रिवार्ड एज वेल ओके डॉक्टर अमाना आई विल रिवार्ड यू इनशाला एंड एक्सीलेंट गाइडेंस एंड एक्सीलेंट रिस्पॉन्स एंड देयर विल बी द रिवार्ड फॉर यू इनशाला इनशाला देयर इज अ बिग रिवार्ड फार डॉक्टर अमाना ओके थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर खतीजा एज वेल थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर नूर एज वेल ओके सो आफ्टर द लेक्चर आई विल सेंड अ गिफ्ट टू द डॉक्टर अमाना ओके सो अ गिफ्ट विल बी सेंड टू डॉक्टर अमाना so all the excellent student who will be rewarded in future inshallah send uh, i really appreciate dr amana deserve this all time she is present and respond first first answer and he, she is very active as well not only all the student are very excellent but one by one i will be rewarding all of you inshallah this is not a specification but i have seen dr amana is on the top level thank you dr amana i will be sending you a one year subscription a one year subscription of iptv so that you can enjoy your subscription as well this is a paid subscription as well i will send you all the educational subscription as well so like uh, udemy subscription as well and coursera subscription as well so coursera plus is a very famous subscription having paid and premium plus subscription inshallah so all the student who will be very vigilant and daily attending my lecture and they will be rewarded from now onward inshallah after my assessment i will reward the student what i will give the gift will be in the form of your lectures access your lecture access gift will be in the form of your premium subscription okay so these gifts will be in the form of your entertainment subscription as well okay so in the form of any subscription that will be boost your knowledge as well and give you the entertainment as well okay so this is for all the people who will be here who will be interacting who will be joining daily lectures and who are excellent student and it is my promise to all of these student they will get the reward inshallah you are you are you are work you are dedication is just for you I, i have no myself benefit but it is very very happiness for me if you are joining daily and spending some time for yourself that is very very beautiful and excellent थैंक यू डॉक्टर अली तुम सारे ग्रेट हो जी आई आई रियली हैप्पी ऑल द मुझे बड़ी खुशी होती है डॉक्टर uh, अमाना को मैं नोट कर रहा हूँ पिछले कई महीनों से मतलब शी इज वेरी एक्टिव एंड इन इन रिस्पॉन्डिंग इन एवरी थिंग ऑफकोर्स डॉक्टर फरहान डॉक्टर अली इज एक्सीलेंट डॉक्टर खतीजा इज ज्वाइनिंग एंड दे ऑलवेज आर रिप्लाइंग एज वेल बट वो कहती है ना कि सारी मेरी जेब तो खाली नहीं करनी ना तो थोड़ा थोड़ा करके दूंगा मैं सबको 
तो अभी एट अ टाइम आई कैन नॉट गिव द सब्सक्रिप्शन टू ऑल द पीपल बट विद पैसेज ऑफ टाइम द पर्सन हु विल बी वेरी विजिलेंट एक्टिव सेंडिंग रिस्पॉन्ड एंड ऑल द थिंग्स एंड आई विल बी गिविंग दम वन बाय वन इन शाह चले आप कुछ पढ़ लेती हैं <coughs> चलें जी अब लेक्चर शुरू करते हैं अपना वेलकम टू सिम्स मैट प्रेप डॉक्टर कामरान खाजा इज हेयर दिस इज अ continuation of neurology lecture series and this is our neurology lecture number 25 and this is a second part of pharmacology this is our second part of our pharmacology series and in this lecture we will be discussing about the anti parkinsons medications before discussing the parkinsons disease uh, medications i will let you know a basic pathway which is what is the pathology in parkinson disease and in this parkinson disease uh, i have a picture to show you uh, that is very important picture to understand the pathology of parkinson disease so this is a picture which you can understand there is a motor pathway in parkinson disease the what is the problem the problem in this is loss of dopamine neurons okay loss of dopamine neurons in the snpc which is called substantia nigra pars compacta substantia nigra pars compacta so this is a problem in substantia nigra pars compacta when there is a loss of dopamine here then what is happening the dopamine will be very very not very very lacking and this will not be inhibiting striatum so there is decrease striatum inhibition when there is a decrease striatum inhibition what is happening then there will be a disinhibition of subthalamic nuclei so very important concept here stn stn is called subthalamic nuclei and we understand this pathway in our neuroanatomy lecture that when there is a subthalamic that is activating globus pallidus internus okay so when there is loss of dopamine striatum inhibition is not occurring then what will happen this will be disinhibition of subthalamic nuclei it's mean there will be no inhibition no inhibition of subthalamic nuclei and we know that the subthalamic nuclei will increase the increase the globus pallidus internus it stimulate and of course you remember that the subthalamic is releasing a very important compound that is glutamate and that glutamate is increasing globus pallidus internus activation and we know when there is globus pallidus internus activation it release gaba gaba is inhibitory and now this releases gaba g a b a gaba and gaba is inhibitory on the thalamus so when there is thalamus inhibited what will happen there is loss of motor cortex stimulation because there is no thalamus activation there is no activation of the cortex and that leads to bradykinesia symptoms very important which is called disordered muscle activation this is a very beautiful picture to understand the pathology of parkinson disease i should repeat here the first part is what is the first part that is loss of neuron in substantia nigra pars compacta the start number 1 this is snpc problem no dopamine release then no dopamine then what will be happening the striatum will not be inhibited striatum inhibition is decreased so what will be happening when there is decreased inhibition it's mean there is over activation of striatum striatum will go and it will increase a stn which is subthalamic nuclei and subthalamic nuclei releases glutamate which increases or activate globus pallidus internus 
globus pallidus internus releases GABA and GABA will inhibit the thalamus. When this thalamus is inhibited, there is no activation of cortex. This leads to bradykinesia resting tremor. This is pathology. So our goal of the treatment of Parkinson's disease is to increase our movements, to increase the dopamine level. So what is our goal? Our goal is to increase the dopamine. Very important. So what is our goal in this case? Goal of the Parkinson therapy. So our goal of Parkinson therapy is the increasing the dopamine. Increasing the dopamine, which is very important concept. Now I will let you know the medications. So before discussing the medication, I will revise a very important concept is here. This is very important concept. So one is loss of dopamine neuron in Parkinson leads to reduced amount of dopamine to the striatum. This is loss of dopamine and what is reduced amount of dopamine that is available to inhibit striatum. What is happening then this overactivation of subthalamic nuclei when overactivation of subthalamic nuclei, there is increased stimulation of globus pallidus internus. There is MCQs here, very important MCQs. Which of the following in the Parkinson disease is overactivated? Okay, so which of the following in the Parkinson disease is overactivated? So MCQs here is which of the following overactivated globus pallidus internus? Why? Because subthalamic is not inhibited and subthalamic release glutamate, it's activate globus pallidus internus and this globus pallidus internus further increases the GABA, it inhibits the thalamus and further the thalamus cannot activate the motor cortex and decreased stimulation of motor cortex leads to the bradykinesia and the rigidity. This is our pathology of Parkinson disease. Now I will go to discuss about the medications where how we can treat the patients. Is that clear? Any question till now? So please let me know if you have any question. Before going to the medications, uh, I hope you understand the pathology. What is the basic pathology of Parkinson's disease and how you should know this? Okay, so now no questions. So we will move to the our uh, main drugs. Okay, the Parkinson disease, the most effective treatment we have divided on the basis of strategies. We have divided a dopamine agonist. Number one medication are dopamine agonist. We will show with this color. Next is dopamine availability medications these medication that increases the dopamine a third type of medication we will discussing about the l dopa availability mean levodopa availability these are the third type of medications and the fourth type of medication are medication that prevent the breakdown of the dopamine these are a fourth type of medications and also there are a fifth type of medication there which actually ex curb excess cholinergic activities we will study uh, in just few moments. So there is also the fifth type which curbs or decreases or whatever improves rigidity actually. These included in the curb excess cholinergic activity. This is a fifth type. These are the five types of medications. And now we will know what is the best one. Okay, so we will first check about the age. Okay, if the age is young and age is old, the which is the medication that is preferred? If the age is young, in young patients, we start the medication which is very important, which is called dopamine agonist. These are the preferred medication in young patients. Young patient, the preferred medication is the non-ergot dopamine agonist. 
which are in younger patients if the patient is old and what medication you will give l dopa availability these are called levodopa and carbidopa they are given in old patients the first difference you should know that in younger patient we give the dopamine agonist in old patient we give the levodopa carbidopa this is a first difference you should know okay then what is the other deep brain stimulation and uh, and subthalamic we will just study in in the next few, few moments i will let you know after the medications what is the surgical treatment of parkinson as well we will move one by one before moving to the medications i have a structure for you to understand the basics pathology how the dopamine is produced how dopamine is degraded how dopamine is crossing blood brain barrier and what are the points where we increase dopamine and what are the point where we can prevent degradation of dopamine these all pathways are described in this picture if you can appreciate we have divided this picture in a two part one is called peripheral circulation another is called central circulation if i can divide this picture there is a two part let me describe this i will divide this picture which is called peripheral portion peripheral portion mean which is not in the brain it is outside of the blood brain barrier you can appreciate this blood brain barrier here okay so this one is blood brain barrier uh, behind this blood brain barrier there is a peripheral circulation and inside the inside this in the red highlighted area this one this is called a central one okay crossing blood brain barrier inside central nervous system okay so this is a dimension first we will see when there is a deficiency of dopamine we have to improve the dopamine in parkinson so what is a strategy we will do we will do we will give a precursor of dopamine to treat the patient it is called l dopa l dopa is naturally when we give is present in the circulation in the periphery before before going to the blood brain barrier i when i use the word periphery it's mean behind or before blood brain barrier so i will be marking with this color on the peripheral structure so this is l dopa which is present just behind this blood brain barrier it is degraded via enzyme which is called dopa decarboxylase dopa decarboxylase ddc so what is this this l dopa is converting back to the dopamine this is a normally we have to inhibit this to treat the parkinson disease why the reason is that we want l dopa inside inside the central nervous system we have to give the chance to cross this l dopa go inside presynaptic substantia nigra neurons and then they can go and activate the receptors leads to leads to a normal activity okay so if we prevent this dopamine generation in periphery then what will happen we are allowing this l dopa to come inside and it's mean it is favoring that we are treating the patients what is other pathway that is degradative pathway which is called comt pathway what is comt comt called very important okay this is a enzyme catechol o methyl transferase okay comt called catechol o methyl transferase okay so this is catechol o methyl transferase this catechol o methyl transferase this enzyme is degrading l dopa into 3 omd what is 3 omd okay so this is a compound which is a degraded from l dopa under influence of comt which is catechol o methyl transferase is that clear let me write this comt catechol o methyl transferase is that clear so this is a peripheral pathway so what are the drugs or what are the inhibitors that can attack on this comt and prevent the degradation of l dopa to 3 omd these are intacapone and tolcapone 
these are in decapone and talcapone these are in decapone and talcapone okay so and carbidopa is a medication that is actually dopa decarboxylase inhibitor and it's prevent l dopa to the dopamine in periphery so till now any question okay so this is a a, a basic overview of peripheral structure now we will go more deep in the central nervous system before going to central i will highlight a very few important mcqs that is usually coming in your exams as well the important mcqs from this section is that what is the adverse effects of dopamine what is adverse effects of dopamine if there is a peripheral conversion of more l dopa to l dopamine dopamine is causing a nausea vomiting and tachyarrhythmia signs okay so nausea okay vomiting tachyarrhythmia this is a adverse effect which is called peripheral adverse effects of the dopamine when there is over production of dopamine this is a mcq sometime asked next we will go more deep now we have allowed this l dopa and l dopa has come in the substantia nigra presynaptic presynaptic neuron and in this case now we want to create the dopamine we we want to create the dopamine from this l dopa now we are allowing this dopa decarboxylase this is free remember we are allowing this dopa decarboxylase now inside to produce this dopamine and now this dopamine will be released in a packages form which which will be packages okay in the form of secretory granules is that clear so what we will do we will do in a packages form now there are another enzymes inside the substantia nigra presynaptic terminal that are attacking degrading dopamine the keyword very important here is that these are degrading degrading the dopamine very important so these degrading dopamine in the form of two very important structure one is called maob which is called monoamine oxidase monoamine oxidase monoamine oxidase this monoamine oxidase is converting this dopamine into this three three mt and dopac these are the two compounds that are actually are degraded compounds of dopamine so we have to prevent this so that's the reason we have to give mao monoamine oxidase inhibitors and these are uh, silicilin and rosagilin very famous medication which is silicilin that is monoamine oxidase inhibitor this prevents conversion of dopamine to what is degraded 3mt and dopac compounds is that clear and the same enzyme we discussed here which is comt catechol o methyl transferase catechol o methyl transferase catechol o methyl transferase this enzyme is the same acting on this as well but very important medication that is talcapone is only acting on central nervous system so when mcqs is coming that which of the following comt inhibitor acts on central nervous system so you will go with this mcqs which is talcapone the talcapone is the medication that is acting on central nervous system not the intacapone only talcapone only talcapone only talcapone only talcapone acts on the cns okay intacapone acts on the periphery is that clear now we are going to discuss the next step next step is that we know that there is a release of these dopamine inside the cleft inside this presynaptic and postsynaptic neuron and this is a cleft okay so we will go in the formation this one is called cleft so there is a dopamine 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 molecule and there is a medication that increase these dopamine availability to the postsynaptic striatum very important we discuss substantia nigra substantia nigra is releasing the dopamine but the receptors are present on striatum as we discussed that release of 
एस एन पी सी पार्स कंपैक्टर रिलीजेज डोपामीन तो दिस इज पार्स कंपैक्टा ओके दिस इज पार्स कंपैक्टा विच इज सबस्टेंशिया नाइग्रा एस एन पी सी दिस इज एस एन पी सी एंड नाउ दिस डोपामीन विल रिलीज एंड दिस विल एक्ट ऑन दिस स्ट्राई एटम पार्ट ओके दिस इज अ पोस्ट साइनेप्टिक न्यूरान दैट्स कंटेन दीज रिसेप्टर्स ऑफ डोपामीन दीज आर कॉल डोपामीन रिसेप्टर्स so medication that increases dopamine availability and these medication name is amantadine amantadine antiviral medication very important and famous medication which is antiviral can anybody let me know antiviral medication amantadine is used for which virus it is antiviral medication and there is a also use for treating antiviral disease as well anybody who can let me know which virus which virus to which virus this medication is used amantadine and the function of this amantadine is that it increases availability of dopamine and the more dopamine will be going toward these receptors and more attachment of dopamine on these receptor improves the symptoms and last but not the least is that there are medication that are directly acting on dopamine receptors and these directly acting medications are very important they are ramipexol rupinirol and bromocriptin the most famous is ramipexol rupinirol that is non ergot alkaloid they are non ergot that are very preferred medication they are ramipexol and rupinirol they are direct agonist of dopamine receptor they attack on these and activate these receptor they attack and activate these receptor these are dopamine agonist is that clear so this is this is the just overview excellent answers excellent answer as expected amantadine is used for influenza okay so all the student who do not know about this influenza is the virus against which amantadine is used excellent so now we have discussed this all the structures and basics pathologies why and how the l-dopa is coming and how they are degraded i will let you know in a quick overview in just uh, just one minute first of all we have to divide in a peripheral structure we have to divide this periphery and the central one is that clear in the periphery there is l dopa that is converted back to the dopamine via dopa decarboxylase is that clear and now dopa l dopa is converted into 3 omd here enzyme is dopa decarboxylase and here enzyme is the comt next when l dopa is coming inside it is converted to the dopamine dopamine is degraded under influence of comt which is central comt central comt not peripheral and tolcapone is only act on cns level and also dopamine degraded with 3 methoxytyramine and other degraded products via maob which is monoamine oxidase inhibitor and as well as there is release of dopamine increased by amantadine as well direct action of these receptor happen via influence of ramipexol and rupinirol these are the excellent picture and now we will go to discuss the medications so we discuss that dopamine agonist are the medication that are acting directly and we have divided these dopamine agonist medication into the non ergot preferred which is very important these are preferred one ramipexol rupinirol mcqs here that is comes in your exam very important mcqs what is adverse effects of these medications the adverse effects of these medication is very important to remember is gambling 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 impulse control disorders so whenever you have the word rupini roll premipexol always they will give you history as that the person is very having a impulse control disorder he has just lost his money lost his money during gambling procedures he is very very aggressive very uh, irritate irritate irrit irritative person also presented with decreased blood pressure as well when he just standing from sitting standing from sitting this is postural hypotension and also the patient can presented with hallucination as well as as well as confusion sleepiness and edema as well edema as well the most important feature 
you should remember about the adverse effect of promipexole impulse control disorder impulse control disorders ergot type which is bromocry bromocryptine is rarely used why the reason of toxicity bromocryptine is very very rarely used these are medication which is used it is called direct agonist of dopamine we discussed just in just in one minute back that these are the medication that are acting directly on these dopamine receptor inside this striatum which is post synaptic terminal in striatum and now next one is very important availability that are increasing amantadine and uh, excellent answers uh, given by the dr amana thank you dr uh, mana thank you a dopamine availability that is increased by amantadine and that amantadine is mainly used to reduce the levodopa why basically it is levodopa induced dyskinesia is adverse effects i will let you know just in few moments what is this levodopa is given and levodopa increases on and off phenomena we will just tell you the adverse effect of levodopa and when we give this amantadine drug it increases dopamine release and also decreases the reuptake of dopamine as well and that's the reason it reduces levodopa induced dyskinesia is that clear and also toxicity leads to the peripheral edema and libido reticularis and ataxia as well so the toxicity of this amantadine is libido reticularis is a key word here to remember as well so libido reticularis is a one word to remember for the specifically that is seen in amantadine is that clear so please let me know if you have any question till now please let me know if you have any question okay so next is very important l dopa availability so l dopa availability we discussed that we have the Uh, l dopa which is entering to the cns which is central l dopa and central l dopa is available for the conversion to the dopamine why we give the l dopa in the in the in the combination of carbi dopa the reason we give this l dopa in combination of the carbi dopa the reason of that the carbi dopa is block peripheral conversion of the l dopa to the dopamine why because it inhibit dopa decarboxylase so that our l dopa is completely will cross the blood brain barrier and maximum amount will be available to cns that's the reason we give carbi dopa then when anybody ask the question why why the l dopa or levo dopa is combined with medication carbi dopa why it is combined with carbi dopa the reason is that to decrease the peripheral conversion the keyword to decrease the peripheral conversion to decrease the peripheral conversion to dopamine and this is the keyword to reduce adverse effects of the peripheral conversion into the dopamine i told you already if dopamine is highly converted from l dopa when we give the medication without carbi dopa there will be nausea and vomiting as well as there will be tachyarrhythmias as well okay tachyarrhythmias as well and we discussed that tolcapone and tacapone these are two medication tolcapone and tacapone tolcapone and tacapone tolcapone and tacapone both are present in periphery but simple tolcapone is present in cns remember and they prevent the peripheral l dopa to 3 o methyl dopa omd 3 omd is which is periphery peripheral reaction and central reaction we discussed that it is central reaction is a different one okay so the central one is tolcapone only we will just discuss this in the next one this one tolcapone is in the form of central nervous system it is inside cns it cross the blood brain barrier in tacapone cannot cross blood brain barrier tolcapone converts 
blocks the conversion of dopamine into 3 methoxy tyramine and inhibit the central comt the very important mcqs here which one is inhibiting the central okay which inhibit the central comt the central comt is inhibited only by the talcapone not the indocapone this is a keyword and mcqs also next we discuss prevent the dopamine breakdown the medication that are preventing the dopamine breakdown we discussed that monoamine oxidase monoamine oxidase is blocking uh, uh, sorry normally it is converting the dopamine into uh, dopase this is a compound degradative compounds and inhibits the mao monoamine oxidase which is more commonly found in brain as compared to in periphery and we discuss the tolcapone as well already that they convert uh, normally there is conversion of dopamine into 3 methoxy tyramine and it in inhibited by our tolcapone and the last but not the least very important point here sometime uh, also ask in exam that what is the improvement of rigidity in the parkinson disease the rigidity and tremor these are are different things bradykinesia is different thing okay so whenever there is a most predominant bradykinesia symptoms we will go with the other medication we discuss aldopa dopamine agonist and dopamine availability when when there are more rigidity symptoms we give the anti muscarinic medication let me tell you this let me tell you the very beautiful concept here there is a normal balance normal balance okay between the dopamine and acetylcholine okay so there is a normal balance inside the central nervous system between the dopamine and acetylcholine so when this balance is disturbed okay so when the balance is disturbed balance is disturbed this leads to the rigidity symptoms okay rigidity so why rigidity happening in the parkinson disease the rigidity symptom is actually due to the acetylcholine increase so when there is more acetylcholine and this will creates the rigidity this more creates rigidity so what we will do we will give the anti muscarinic anti acetylcholinergic medications and these acetylcholine inhibiting medication are benzotropine trihexy phenidyl medication these are anti muscarinic medication they improve the tremors and rigidity this is mcqs here okay so the mcqs is that why there is rigidity and in tremors the reason of okay disturbance of the balance of the dopamine and acetylcholine disturbance of the acetylcholine dopamine balance when the more acetylcholine this acetylcholine will leads to rigidity and tremor symptoms so we will give anti muscarinic medication to improve rigidity and tremor symptom but remember for bradykinesia symptom we will give the dopamine medications is that clear so this is a little knowledge on your books but it is a, i have explained it here this is sometime ask in the higher level of exams as well why importance of anti muscarinic medications in parkinson disease as well so there is a answer i have already given in this section okay what is importance of benzotropine trihexyphenidyl anti muscarinic medications in parkinson disease is that clear we will move to the next session uh, which is how the levodopa is uh, converted and what is the adverse effects of levodopa so there is a levodopa carbidopa the famous medication which is used primarily in old age for parkinson disease they increase dopamine in brain okay l dopa cross the blood brain barrier and it enter the cns carbidopa is peripheral already we discussed that it peripheral dopa decarboxylase inhibitor and it cannot cross blood brain barrier that's the reason the carbidopa is only 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 prevents the 
prevents the degradation in periphery okay many of the student will ask this question why there is central levodopa is not degraded when we give carbidopa because this carbidopa is only 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 acting on the periphery only acts on the periphery behind or before the blood brain barrier okay so that's the reason when we give the l dopa l dopa it cross the blood brain barrier when it enters cns it is not degraded further by the carbidopa so maximum l dopa will reach to the brain and leads to the improvement of bradykinesia so what are the primarily improvements in the uh, parkinson disease improvement of the bradykinesia symptom is that clear the improvement of brady kinesia symptom what is most important adverse effect regarding these carbidopa levodopa very very excellent question that is usually asked in many of the exams mcqs important mcqs here what is the adverse effect of carbidopa and levodopa the first and most important they ask about the nausea vomiting hallucination and postural hypertension this is a super easy but there is another adverse effects there is a higher level of exam question which is called on and off phenomena which is called fasciculations formations i will let you know which is called on and off phenomena okay when there is parkinson disease with a passage of time it leads to the progressive nature okay when there is a progressive damaging of the uh, substantia nigra there is a desensitization happens to these carbidopa and levodopa medications when this desensitization happen there is a starting of a phenomena which is called on and off phenomena on and off phenomena on and off phenomena okay so when there is improved mobility improved action mean less less bradykinesia during the on periods and there is derangement of the motor function during the off periods okay so where why this is happening of on and off phenomena when there is a desensitization by the l dopa so when there is l dopa given for a long term and there is a progressive disease the there are the cells there are neurons that are damaged in progressive disease that have a least effect and this least effect will lead to a desensitization and over sensitization by few areas so sometime there will be on phenomena on phenomena mean in, when we give the medication there will be improvement and in some of the phases when we give medication there will be no improvement which will be no motor improvement actually we give l dopa levodopa for motor improvement when we no see improvement even after giving the medication so it's mean the medication medication effect wears off medication effect wears off during the off phenomena and i will let you describe in a picture as well uh, there is a picture i have here very beautiful picture why motor fluctuation seen in the parkinson disease okay so motor fluctuation in parkinson disease is divided okay i will make a therapeutic window of levodopa and carbidopa so basically the levodopa has a very important feature of therapeutic window this is a therapeutic window i am highlighting this is a therapeutic window of the parkinson disease is that clear i am highlighting a therapeutic window okay let me show you this one is the therapeutic window this one and this one okay so if there is any problem let's suppose we decrease the dose of levodopa what will happen it leads to the off phenomena off phenomena it's mean off phenomena mean decrease motor activity it is decrease motor activity when we have to give these low dose of the levodopa mean a below dose low dose okay when we give the levodopa dosing decreased okay and now 
when this is happening due to pro prolonged progressive disease pro prolonged progressive disease when there is the prolonged progressive disease there is a desensitization and this desensitization leads to the off and on phenomena this is a normal therapeutic window i have highlighted in the red color this is a normal window in which there is no issue but after above that i am highlighting in a blue color in this area there will be a dyskinesia dyskinesia mean there is increased or over activity because of the increased dose of levodopa so in this case there will be increased levodopa dose so we have to give in, in a therapeutic window we cannot give higher we cannot give lower okay so the motor fluctuations which is including on on mean more over activity more dyskinesia off mean mean low activity so this is on off on off on off this is motor fluctuation seen in parkinson disease this is seen in prolonged cases very very prolonged cases is that cases very very prolonged cases so i hope you understand my point what is the motor fluctuation in parkinson disease okay so we have discussed the medication for parkinson disease uh, if you have any question please let me know okay any question please let me know for anti parkinson's medications before going to next neurodegenerative disease therapy let me know any question for anti parkinson's medication as well dr marwa dr iman dr khatija dr ali dr h welcome dr uh, farhan dr amana dr marwa dr noor as well excellent thank you dr rab nawaz thank you dr all the doctors please thank you so much and please let me know if you have any question and then i will move to the next so next is neurodegenerative disease therapy neurodegenerative diseases are alzheimer disease amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and huntington disease this is super easy i will not go more deep and uh, there is a simple one is alzheimer disease we know that what is a mechanism of alzheimer disease the mechanism of alzheimer disease is that there is a cholinergic neuron degeneration and when there is cholinergic neuron degeneration in the basal forebrain and the keyword here is basal forebrain okay basal for brain and there is a degeneration of neurons acetylcholine neuron degeneration is that clear so there is a degeneration of acetylcholine neuron and these cholinergic neuron actually are very important to regulate your memories okay so they are present in frontal areas they are present in hippocampal areas so when forebrain basal forebrain that includes frontal as well as a hippocampal area they are processing memory that's the reason in pathogenesis of alzheimer the if effect is on the memory let me tell you the pathophysiology of alzheimer to make it more understanding the medications as well before before going to discuss the uh, patholo sorry pharmacology you must know pathology as well we know that there is a degeneration of our cholinergic neurons in basal forebrain and this leads to the memory loss and functional decline what is happening then next when there is a cholinergic neuron actually regulate the neocortex which is involving in memory in hippocampal area and frontal cortex area so what we will give choline choline esterase inhibitors very important mean we give the medication that will be preventing the reuptake of acetylcholine so that the maximum acetylcholine will be present behind between the presynaptic and postsynaptic neuron which is called synaptic cleft so that cholinergic transmission will be resumed let me tell you in a beautiful diagram here let's suppose this is a presynaptic neuron and this one is postsynaptic neuron is that clear this is presynaptic and this is post synaptic this is called pre synaptic one okay so these are the acetylcholine okay that are released and there is a mechanism that acetylcholine will be reuptake in back 
okay re uptake of acetyl choline under influence of and there is also enzyme that is degrading this acetyl choline in the form of acetyl choline esterase so what we will do we inhibit these acetyl choline esterase acetyl choline esterase enzyme so that these acetyl choline will be coming toward these post synaptic neuron so that we will improve the memory and cognition as well that are very important because acetyl choline is maintaining your your memory in in the neocortical area in the hippocampal area in the frontal cortex area so these two areas acetyl choline maintaining memories okay so in alzheimer disease the medication that we give are donipazil rivastigmine donipazil rivastigmine galantamine donipazil rivastigmine galantamine donipazil rivastigmine galantamine they are acetyl choline esterase inhibitor they prevent the degradation of acetyl choline and this is a first line medication for alzheimer disease the in adverse effect you know that they are actually acting uh, more acetyl choline activities they will be having adverse effect of like nausea dizziness insomnia very important we cannot use these medication when the person has conduction problem the reason is that when there is a conduction problem we know that conduction is not happening if we promote the more parasympathetic activity because these will having a parasympathetic activity it will exacerbate or increase conduction block as well increases the conduction block so we cannot give give these medication in conduction problem abnormalities the reason more parasympathetic activity so it more parasympathetic activity will promote the more conduction block we cannot use in conduction block okay next very important mimantin medication mimantin is nmda receptor antagonist we discuss nmda related to the calcium okay so nmda receptors are very important regarding excitotoxicity because they are when activated they leads to hyper excitability hyper excitability and all the degenerative neurons inside our central nervous system are under influence of nmda receptor under influence of calcium so calcium is leading to excitotoxicity damaging of neuron which is leading to are called neurotoxic neurotoxic so we give mimantin to inhibit that nmda receptor and which is very important that it is only 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 improves improves the symptom it is not increases the prognosis okay its progression is decrease okay already disease cannot be reversed is that clear so mimantin is only given for the improvement of your progression progression improvement only okay it is given in advanced dem dementia and what is the adverse effect of this mimantin medication dizziness confusion and hallucinations okay and next medication we are discussing rilozole rilozole is a medication used for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis the reason is that it is decreasing glutamate excitotoxicity there is excitotoxicity in our brain one is by nmd excitotoxicity another is glutamate glutamate is actually the neurotransmitter that activates the excitotoxicity under influence of nmda so remember always always glutamate is a neurotransmitter we discussed in a previous lecture that activate nmda as well as ampa receptor while in nmda receptor they activate calcium in ampa receptor they activate sodium in nmda receptor it increases calcium and increases excitotoxicity so it only improves survival very important excellent okay rilozole improves survival in amyotrophic lateral sclerosis next is huntington disease in huntington disease we have a vmat 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 inhibitor what is vmat vmat is vesicular monoamine transporter when there is a packaging of any neurotransmitter and it is being released while making a packaging of neurotransmitter and the release there is a importance of a vmat which is called monoamine transporter vesicular proteins these proteins are necessary for making a vesicles and
and transporting in the synaptic cleft. When these VMAT, which is monoamine transporters, in the form of vesicles, they are inhibited. It means our neurotransmitter will not be released inside the cleft. And when what will happen? This will decrease the neurotransmitter availability. And we know that in Huntington, there is overactivity of dopamine, more dopamine more dopamine more dopamine more dopamine what will happen okay the reverse pathway happen as in the parkinson and there is no dopamine in parkinson we have a bradykinesia but over activity of dopamine and huntington leads to the tardive type chorea tardive dyskinesia so we decrease the dopamine by giving this inhibit inhibit inhi inhibitor of the vmat this decreases dopamine packaging and release. And these are tetrabenazine is a famous medication that is used. Tetrabenazine is a medication. Tetrabenazine and tetrabenazine. This is a medication that is used. Is that clear? So it is used for Huntington chorea as well and tardive dyskinesia as well. Okay. So this is used for Huntington disease, chorea and tardive dyskinesia as well. Okay, can anybody let me know any other disease where this deutetrabenazine and tetrabenazine are used? These medication used in any other disease. I will see who will tell me this answer. Any other disease where these medication are used? No, no, Dr. Khatija, loading dose of L-DOPA not cause the off phenomena. No, no, this is due to long-term use of the medication. This long-term use of the medication and there is a degeneration actually. Uh, there is a complex pathogenesis of this, but I am not uh, telling you these complicated things. This will be very difficult for all of you. There is actually in a degeneration of Parkinson disease in a long term there is a more degeneration and some of the cells are being hyperactive and some of the cells are desensitized, okay? So when sometime we give the medication, there is a desensitization happening. This desensitization leads to the off phenomena. Sometime we give the medication, the a nearby, nearby cells are overactivated. This is leading to the on phenomena. Okay, so uh, who will tell me the answer? What are the met uh, like other diseases where we use you tetrabenazine and tetrabenazine what who will tell me this answer any any disease where we use tetrabenazine schizophrenia no it's not first line schizophrenia we use the actually we give them schizophrenia to adverse effects of antipsychotic, which is tardive dyskinesia. Is that clear? So we give the medication to treat tardive dyskinesia, which is actually antipsychotic adverse effect. Antipsychotic adverse effect. Basically, due tetrabenazine and tetrabenazine is used any any other psychiatric diseases. Who will let me know which is associated with? No, it's not Dr. Avas. Welcome. It's not exactly what you are thinking. Actually, actually, it is used as it is used not primarily used for uh, schizophrenia. It is maybe used as antipsychotic, but I am asking the disease of disease where it can be used. Have you heard the word tick formation? Have you heard this word ticks? Any, any person who know about the motor ticks, sensory ticks,
any disease which is associated with uh, motor tic disorders, tic disorders, vocal disorders. Okay, any, 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 and that is associated with also attention deficit hyperactive disorder as well. Okay, so that disease which is involving a tic motor movement, sensory tics. Okay, and that is also which is called. I am just needing a specific answer from the students. Exactly. Thank you, Dr. Ramana. This your answer is right. Thank you, Dr. Ramana. Thank you. I was asking this disease, which is Tourette disorder. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, it is used as a Tourette disorder. Okay, this is a motor tics, sensory tics is available in this. Also, it is also happen in ADHD. Already I told you attention deficit hyperactive disorder. Thank you, Dr. Iman. Thank you, Dr. Aiza, Dr. Ali, Dr. Khatija, Dr. Avas as well for your answer. Antipsychotic is primarily not the medication of this is a use of uh, tetrabenazine. This is actually used of adverse effect of antipsychotics. Tardive dyskinesia is adverse effect of antipsychotic use in this case as well. And also it is used in Tourette disorder as well as it is used in ADHD associated Tourette disorder because Tourette disorder is associated with this ADHD as well. So we can use this medication as well. Thank you. This was just extra information to tell you. Uh, so the tetrabenazine and dutetrabenazine can be used in the Tourette disorder as well. And this is sometimes used as a Tourette disorder as well. Okay, so next we will move to our next section uh, that is local anesthetics we are going to discuss about anesthetics and a uh, local and general anesthetic and we will first discuss the local anesthetics in local anesthetics we have a two different form one is called ester form and one is called amide form and ester form is most likely benzocaine chloroprocaine cocaine tetracaine these are called esters and others are amides. They have amine group as well. They are called bupivacaine. I, I. Remember, they have the two eyes. Two eyes in the amides. Remember, two I in amide. They have the I. Amide has I. And two eyes are also present. So remember the name like this. Two amine, two eyes in amide, two eyes in amide, two eyes in amide, two eyes in amides, like this. Bupiva cane, Lido cane, okay. Mapiva cane, Prilo cane, Ropiva cane. This is amide. What is mechanism of action? Mechanism of action is that very important mechanism of action. Let you know in a picture, very beautiful. First, you understand the mechanism and I will let you know the picture. It is blocking neurotransmission via the voltage gated sodium channel inhibition on inner portion of the channel along the nerve fibers. It is most effective in rapid firing neuron and tertiary amine is very important for because they can pass in uncharged form okay tertiary amine, amine is dif different okay amine has a different primary secondary and tertiary a characteristic amides which are having a tertiary type and they are passed in the uncharged form and i will let you know what is importance of this they for they can cross the membrane like this without any hesitation and when they bind again, it have to be activated in the ions and then they can form. They go inside in uncharged form and then bind to the ion channel as charged form again. It means 
before attaching the have to make a charge again i will let you know in a next picture uh, now i will give you a overview from this picture a very beautiful picture here what is mechanism of action of local anesthetics the local anesthetics are basically in existence in a charged form and uncharged form a blue color is uncharged form in uncharged form they are exactly diffusing like this this drug is usually in uncharged form when it is coming in the form of this it is exactly in uncharged you can see that there is a no charge on this drug and before going to bind this voltage gated sodium channels okay because our target is voltage gated sodium channel but not the outer not the outer the target is inner side this one is a target side which is the inner side okay inner side is our target okay so what will happen this uncharged will come and it will be h positive attaching this will be a charge now and this will be attaching our target area and after the after the drug is converted to the charged form and it block the sodium channel which is inner side and it prevents depolarization depolarization it is the mechanism of local anesthetics is that clear so general anesthesia so we will sorry we are discussing the local anesthesia and the next concept of local anesthesia is that what is the acidic tissue so whenever they gave you history that the person has infection person has infection person has infection so when there is infected tissue that tissue is called acidic tissue and in this acidic tissue you know that the anesthetics are those anesthetic that are alkaline anesthetics they are charged very important when there is alkaline media and that is a drug which is an aesthetic drug that is in alkaline form when they go inside this infective tissue they are in a charged form and they cannot penetrate membrane as effectively as in a normal tissue so why why we give more drug more drug more drug more drug mcqs here okay they gave you history that person has skin injury person has skin infections and we have to give the medication and we are giving alkaline anesthetic medication so normal dose in a normal patient is let's suppose they give you is like this so we will what we will do the answer will be we increase the dose increase the dose increase the dose is a key word here increase the dose so when we giving to the infected or acidic tissue when we giving alkaline anesthetic the answer is increase the dose next mcqs is what is the order of the loss of first there is a loss of pain when we give local anesthesia then there is a loss of temperature then loss of touch and pressure pain temperature touch pressure pain temperature touch pressure you should remember like this what is use of local anesthetic minor procedure minor procedure spinal anesthesia minor procedure spinal anesthesia local anesthetic you know there is a local procedure mainly minor local procedure and is like wound wash wound debridement is done in local sometime when there is a skin infection and uh, any other we give the local injection and then we give the wound wash this is a simple spinal anesthesia is of course as a under the local we give the lidocaine and uh, any other local anesthesia we give the spinal anesthesia inside the if there is a allergy to esters then replace to give the amides as well what is adverse effect of local anesthetics the adverse effects of local anesthesia is excitation cns excitation very important it is seen in all the cases but there are a specific adverse effect cardiac involvement is seen in bupivacaine okay and hypertension and hypo any type of hypertension or hypo can happen arrhythmia is very very characteristically seen in cocaine okay cocaine can leads to arrhythmias and very important mcqs always ask super high yield mcqs super high yield mcqs that is asked always ask 
what are the medication leading to met hemoglobinemia these are the benzocaine and prilocaine this is leading to met hemoglobinemia okay when a, when they gave you history that person has a procedure done and local procedure we give a medication of local anesthesia and after that there is a different color and there is a symptom of the dyspnea and there is a uh, there is a other problem met hemoglobinemia sign okay so always go for the met hemoglobinemia when there is a intake of water from a well area or any old wells where there is a, a toxicity of water there is also the history that can lead to met hemoglobinemia okay so this was local anesthetic drugs now we will discuss about the general anesthetic drug the general anesthetic drugs these are very important lipid solubility the any drug that have lipid solubility can cross blood brain barrier they are having a very very more potency and they are having a more rapid action the first key word to understand general anesthesia is to know about Uh, what are the factor that lead to rapid action or rapid induction and what are the factor that leads to a uh, rapid recovery the more is solubility in the lipids determine your more potency of the anesthetics which is general anesthetics general anesthetics basically if i will go with a inhaled anesthetics specifically inhaled anesthetics have a characteristics which is called minimum alveolar concentration minimum alveolar concentration mac this minimum alveolar concentration mean a limited a minor a few or minimum account, amount of the anesthetic medication which is which is given and it leads to the subject from moving okay it needs to the 50% response from moving in response to noxious stimulus it's mean when you are giving the drug and after that drug there is a loss of 50% pain mean pain response has been decreased up to 50% it's mean that amount of the medication we are giving this is a mac of that medication mac of that medication is that clear so the mac will be less more will be potency mac will be less more will be potency let me tell you so more less mac and is equal to more potency if we can go with formula potency is equal to 1 over mac 1 over mac mean the the more minimum requirement to produce 50% response of analgesia to, to promote 50% response of analgesia that amount is be as low as low it's mean that is a very potent medication is that clear let me tell you what is general anesthesia what is called general anesthesia what is the definition of general anesthesia and anybody let me know can anybody tell me what is general anesthesia what is general anesthesia what is general anesthesia definition please let me know who will who will answer dr raiza dr ramana dr iman dr tija dr mohammad ahmed dr avas thank you welcome dr uh, pran dr uh, h who will tell me what is general anesthesia okay let me see your answers okay see your answers 
Okay, okay. Waiting for your answer. What is general anesthesia? Definition of general anesthesia. Okay, I will let you know what is general anesthesia. Okay, I will let you know what is general anesthesia. It is actually a definition of general anesthesia is that it is loss of consciousness. There are a four to five component of general anesthesia that is included in the definitions. The general anesthesia has a definition which is including a four to five component. A one first component is this loss of consciousness. This is a number one. Second one is called uh, an analgesia effect. Third is called amnestic effect. Fourth is called skeletal muscle relaxation effect. And number five is inhibition of reflexes. So general anesthesia contain the five component, which is called general anesthesia. Let me tell you that this is a definition of general anesthesia. To include the component, we will check if there is a loss of consciousness. There is analgesia effect, there is amnesia effect, and relaxation of muscle, and no reflexes. Okay, this is due to inhibition of our electrical neurons. Okay, is that clear? So this is a five components of general anesthesia. And what are the other? Apart from their desirable action, some of the inhaled anesthetics have organ effects. Okay. So uh, many of the anesthetics medication have the organ symptoms of the body. One of them important organs, cardio cardiovascular system. Cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system is myocardial depression. Decrease in cardiac output. Please write it down on your book. It is not written. It is not written. So the keyword here is myocardial depression. Cardiac output is decreased. Okay. Hypotension is associated with fluorinated anesthetics. Very important. Decrease blood pressure in the fluorinated. So, what are the fluorinated inhaled anesthetics? That's isoflurane, sevoflurane. Isoflurane, sevoflurane. Isoflurane. And sevoflurane. These are leading to decreased cardiac output, decreased blood pressure, specifically decreased cardiac output. And next, there is a respiratory effect. Respiratory effect. Except the nitrous oxide, okay, all are respiratory depressants. All are respiratory depressants except nitrous oxide. They decrease a tidal volume. Decrease minute or tidal volume t vt is called tidal volume they causes decrease in minute ventilation it leads to hypercapnia increasing the paco2 please write it down write it down write it down these keywords i am writing on the uh, right side decrease cardiac output decrease blood pressure seen in isoflurane and sevoflurane Respiratory issues, there is in decrease VT and increase PaCO2, partial pressure of carbon dioxide. And there is the most important, most important increase, increase deposition of secretions, increase deposition of secretions and decrease mucociliary clearance as well. So there is more likely chance there is decreasing the cough reflex as well okay decreasing the cough reflex this is a very important findings i am writing here decreasing the cough reflex very important and also there is bronchodilation some of the medication can lead to bronchodilation in the specifically halothane sevoflurane is preferred in asthma the reason they are doing bronchodilation. There is a important MCQs as well. There is a sum of the medication I will highlight here. Halothane sevoflurane is used in asthma because of bronchodilation properties. Is that clear? We discuss about the 
this. Next, we discuss brain. What are effects on the brain? In the brain, we discuss the fluorinetic anesthetics decrease vascular resistance and increase in cerebral blood flow. Increase cerebral blood flow. Very important. Okay. So that's the reason it leads to increase ICP, intracranial pressure. Okay, intracranial pressure is increased. Very, very super important. MCQs here that fluorinated anesthetics leads to increase intracranial pressure as well. Okay. And the next in the kidneys, they decrease GFR. They decrease the GFR. Okay, so they decrease the GFR, glomerular filtration rate, GFR decreased, and they increase renal vascular resistance and decreasing the renal plasma flow, decreasing renal plasma flow, RPF. This is a scene in kidney. And what is the next hepatic flow? Hepatic flow is also decreased regarding the fluorinated anesthetics. So always remember, you should write it down. These are the features that is usually asked, uh, not always asked, but many other exams, important exams ask these features as well. What are anesthetics effects on different organs? Is that clear? So there is a more concept before going more in more detail of general anesthesia. Uh, what is lipid solubility and what is blood solubility? Okay. So when the drugs, there is decrease in the solubility in the blood, that will be having a rapid induction, rapid recovery. Rapid induction, rapid recovery. The drug with more lipid solubility will have more potency. So when nitrous oxide, the drug is very famous, that has decreased solubility in the blood, and this will go rapid induction. It will go much more rapid in the brain. It will lead to the rapid anesthesia effect and it will be redistributed, 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 leads to the rapid recovery. Rapid recovery keyword here is that there is a rapid redistribution in different body. That is leads to the rapid recovery. It's not like that we give the nitrous oxide and it's lead to the rapid anesthesia. Person will go in anesthesia. It leads to loss of consciousness, amnesia, muscle relaxant and all the things and then after there is a rapid recovery the reason of rapid recovery is that this this drug is having a redistribution effect and this is a very low potency low potency low potency but when the drugs like isoflurane is having a lipid solubility they will have a slow effect but it will be prolonged effect slow effect prolonged effect slow effect prolonged effect slow effect prolonged effect. That's why we use sevoflurane, isoflurane during our generalized anesthesia procedure to have prolonged 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 hour surgery. But nitrous oxide we use for a, a few of the cavity procedures. Cavity procedure, cavity procedure. So you should remember like this. We have discussed the MAC. We have discussed uh, importance of lipid solubility. We have discussed induction and recovery. We have discussed the redistribution effect as well. I will let you know the redistribution effect and then we will give one by one discussion of these medications. There is a concept of redistribution. Uh, I have a picture here, very important picture. When there is a highly lipophilic medication, like you can expect this highly lipophilic medication, example is isoflurane. You can give the isoflurane example here. Okay, isoflurane is highly lipophilic medication. What is the action of this in 30 seconds to the 10 minutes? This is a 10 minutes duration. Okay, this is a 10 minutes duration here. This is a 10 minutes duration and up to the 10 minutes, this is a just 30 seconds. The action is started and in 30 seconds, this medication is going 
like this one and it is rapidly rapidly reached to the brain first and it reach to the heart it leads to the liver it reach to the kidney these four organs are very important that are highly highly responsible for receiving the medications the isoflurane from the 30 second up to 10 minutes they will reach in these four organs and after that there will be a redistribution redistribution a slow redistribution in next 30 minutes they will go in skeletal muscle and skin the keyword and mcqs that is asked from this section is that okay after the 10 minutes or after the 30 or 50 minutes there is a starting of redistribution of medication i should mention this redistribution of the medication and that redistribution of medication is most likely in skeletal muscle and the skin and after that after that there is also the uh, from the skeletal muscle and the skin they will be going down okay going down and now they will be transferring these medication to the connective and bone and adipose tissue and skeletal muscle will be now redistributing and all the now medications are all the anesthetic medication will go in bone and adipose tissue after 3 hours after end of procedure after end of procedure this is the third most important point okay our medication will go in connective tissue bone and adipose and that's the reason we have a no effect after 3 hour of generalized anesthetic medication so it's mean at this time after the 3 hour after the 3 hours or after the 2 hours so there is no effect it's mean all the medication is not in skeletal muscle it is not in the brain it's not in the heart it's not in the liver it's not in the kidney it is present in our adipose tissue in connective tissue and this is a dead gas it mean we are not having analgesia we are not having perfect loss of consciousness we are not having the relaxation of muscle we are not having anything that's the reason our consciousness will start to appear after the 2 hours 3 hours it's mean the all the gases is now converted from brain heart kidney skeletal muscle skin to world the bone to world connective tissue this is a called tissue dis distribution of highly lipophilic drugs okay this is a tissue distribution of highly lipophilic medications is that clear next is the one by one we will study these drugs uh, inhaled anesthetics we discuss that fluorine 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 okay sevoflurane desflurane isoflurane these are fluorinated these three are the fluorinated okay and uh, and they are very important we discuss already and nitrous oxide is a separated this is a separate and they have another important feature so all mechanism is unknown mechanism is unknown but the thing is that there is a potassium efflux potassium efflux is sometime noted that there is a mechanism and some theory say that there is a potassium efflux that leads to hyperpolarization and hyperpolarization leads to the problem and any the action okay potassium efflux hyperpolarization is a few of the concept theory say that this is the action of an inhaled anesthesia next what is adverse effect already we discuss about that the adverse effects are respiratory depression decrease cough reflex i have told you already myocardial depression hypotension cerebral blood flow will be increase leading to increase intracranial pressure decrease metabolic rate decrease skeletal and smooth muscle tone of course and post operative nausea and vomiting is a very important adverse effect and malignant hyperthermia we just discuss in few moments what is malignant hyperthermia in the next slide i will discuss it this is adverse effects of inhaled anesthesia and next there is a diffusion gas which is nitrous oxide this is very important for pneumothorax procedure because of the they are given in the gas filled cavity and it is very low potent very low potent but 
रैपिड इंडक्शन रैपिड रिकवरी रैपिड इंडक्शन रैपिड रिकवरी रैपिड इंडक्शन रैपिड रिकवरी दिस इज फीचर ऑफ द नाइट्रस ऑक्साइड वाई इट इज रैपिड रिकवरी रैपिड रीडिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इन द टिश्यू रैपिड रीडिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इन द टिश्यू सो कैन एनी बॉडी लेट मी नाउ हु आर लेट नाउ दिस कंसेप्ट वेन एवर यू हैव अ क्वेश्चन इन एग्जाम वाई दिस हैव अ रैपिड रिकवरी द रीजन इज रैपिड रीडिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इन टिश्यू नेक्स्ट next we will discuss about intravenous anesthetics intravenous anesthetic are three very important propofol etomidate ketamine propofol etomidate ketamine okay etomidate and ketamine propofol is potentiating two mechanism one is gaba receptor potentiation and other is inhibition of nmd receptor okay and this is same respiratory depression is seen same hypotension is seen and very important medication which is used for induction of anesthesia it is propofol i will let you know here very important medication very important medication for the use commonly used medication for induction of anesthesia the word induction is very important to understand the propofol so iv agent used induction of anesthesia that is the propofol next is etomidate etomidate is preferred it is hemodynamically neutral propofol is preferred when there is hypertension patient etomidate preferred when there is in hemodynamic neutral patients ketamine is preferred in hypotension patients i will let you know very interesting and very clinical point of view to use these inhale, inhaled and anesthetics medication when a person presented to you with a history of with a history of hypertension which iv anesthetics you will prefer propofol okay very important question here a person presented with person with with the htn hypertension your preferred medication is propofol why the adverse effect of propofol is the hypotension hypotension so it is preferred that already the person has hypertension we will give the propofol it will balance the blood pressure okay and person has no history of hypotension no history of hypertension person has no issues it is hemo hemodynamically neutral medication neutral anesthesia we need etomidate is the medication etomidate is the medication which is hemodynamically neutral one but there is adverse effect of nausea and vomiting which is seen but it is contraindicated in the kidney problems very important here which is contraindicated in the kidney issues because it leads to adrenal insufficiency it is contraindicated in the kidney disease is that clear what is the ketamine whenever there is a person presented with hypotension i am now writing here person presented with the hypotension now your preference will be ketamine because ketamine increases the blood pressure increases blood pressure is that clear so it increases the heart rate it increases the cerebral blood flow increases the bronchodilation it is sympathomimetic medication it is sympathomimetic medication and this is a preferred in hypotension patients hypotension patient hypotension patients and it has a neuropsychiatric issue that is called that is called hallucination and vivid dreams hallucinations and vivid dreams hallucinations and vivid dreams is that clear so the inhaled anesthetic person presented with hypertension propofol is the medication person presented with hemodynamic neutral patient preferred etomidate person presented with hypotension 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 bradycardia hypotension bradycardia preferred is ketamine is that clear now i will let you know more deep about intravenous anesthetics so propofol is highly lipophilic anesthetic drug used for induction and maintenance of general anesthesia and it is a very important because it is having 
uh, action of response is within 30 seconds. So we already discussed about the propofol is the first medication used for induction and maintenance of anesthesia. When we give the bolus of this propofol, it is a rapidly cleared from the plasma and distributed and organs which are having a high blood flow like in the brain. And our, over the time, the propofol is redistributed to organ that are having less blood flow like the fat and muscle tissue. And because the site of action of propofol is the brain, the redistribution is the reason of the termination of drug action. So I told you already when the question was, what is, what is, what is, what is the termination of the drug? What is the reason of termination of the drug? What is the reason of termination of the drug? Redistribution of drug. Redistribution of drug. This is a key word for your answer. So, uh, so we have discussed today what is the anti-Parkinson's medications. Uh, we have discussed today what are the inhaled uh, like local anesthesia. We have discussed the neurodegenerative disorders. We have discussed local anesthesia as well as we have discussed the uh, general, generalized anesthetic medication. I think it's enough for today and we will cover the all other uh, like in the last lecture. Okay. So if you have any question, please let me know. And then this is just end of our lecture number uh, 26. Please let me know if you have any question. Dr. Ali Hasnan, Dr. Aiza Tariq, Dr. Ali, Dr. Aiza, Dr. Dr. Avas. Dr. Avas, thank you. Thank you so much. Maza aare ki nahi? Hain? Ye batao ke aap enjoy karti ho ki nahi? Speed mein bohut slow, slow speed pe ja raha mujhe lag raha hain. Kya khyaal hai? अच्छा कल के लेक्चर के लिए शायद मैं अनाउंसमेंट करना चाहूंगा कल का लेक्चर शायद जल्दी होगा आ, कल की मेरी बिजी स्कैजल है थोड़ा सा कल का जो लेक्चर होगा वो हम साढ़े चार बजे रख लें किसी को इशू तो नहीं है कल का लेक्चर साढ़े चार बजे रख लें किसी को इशू तो नहीं है Yes, before Aftari, Dr. Amana, Dr. Khatija, Dr. Amna, Dr. Tariq Jameel, uh, thank you so much. Inshallah, aap logun ke liye, inshallah, khush khabri aane wali hai. Aap logun ke liye, maine inshallah, reward rakhne hai. Jo student daily aayega, jo student daily interact karega, I will just uh, add some of the reward system as well. और उन स्टूडेंट्स का अभी जितने भी स्टूडेंट हमारे इंक्रीज होंगे उनका एक स्पेसिफिक मैं ग्रुप भी बनाऊंगा इनशाला इन नेक्स्ट फ्यू डेज में ताकि मुझे पता हो कि मेरे डेली आने वाले स्टूडेंट कितने हैं उन क्या लेक्चर सुन रहे हैं वो कितना पढ़ चुके हैं उनके क्या कंसर्न है 
आई विल स्पेसिफिकली उन उन लोगों को मैं प्रियॉरिटी दूंगा इन जो स्टूडेंट मेरे डेली आया करेंगे तो थैंक यू सो मच और मेरी तरफ से जो है ना आप लोगों को फुल सपोर्ट है जस्ट आपने पढ़ना है यू इफ यू नीड एनी थिंग यू जस्ट टेल मी जितना मेरे से होगा आई विल रिवार्ड यू आप पढ़ें अपना इंजॉय करें और थोड़ा सा पढ़ाई का टाइम निकालें स्पीड के हवाले से मैं सोच रहा हूँ कि स्पीड बढ़ाऊँ अगर किसी को इशू नहीं है तो मैं स्पीड बढ़ा दूंगा अगले जब जीआईटी स्टार्ट करूंगा तो मैं बहुत ज्यादा स्पीड बढ़ानी है अभी इसलिए नहीं बढ़ा रहा क्योंकि काफी सारे स्टूडेंट जो है ना कहते हैं कि हमें समझ नहीं आती डॉक्टर हम ना इनशाला आई हैव माई सजेशन की स्पीड थोड़ी बढ़ा लें स्टूडेंट uh, बोर हो जाती हैं सुन सुन के दो घंटे में आई नो बट एक फीचर होता है स्पीड बढ़ा सकती हैं आप जब आप पीछे करके अगर कोई चीज़ सुन रहे हो तो आप स्पीड बढ़ा सकते हो लेकिन लाइव लेक्चर में आई थिंक अलाउ नहीं होता स्पीड का आई थिंक डॉक्टर खतीजा अभी अभी फिलहाल के लिए रमजान में ऐसा स्केजल है रमजान के बाद हम चेंज करेंगे एक्चुअली अभी हमें इसलिए करना पड़ता है क्योंकि काफी सारे स्टूडेंट होते हैं वो सो रहे होते हैं अपने कॉलेज के टाइम के बाद तो फोर थर्टी हम कंसिडर कर सकती हैं आफ्टर रमजान रमजान में आई थिंक टेन पी एम इज अ फाइन अगर हम इसको नाइन थर्टी भी कर सकते हैं टू आर बिफोर अफतारी फोर थर्टी फाइव थर्टी हाँ अफतारी से दो घंटे या डेढ़ घंटा पहले इस होके फाइन फोर थर्टी टाइम से हम इसको ले सकते हैं फाइव फाइव पी एम तक हम इसको ले फाइव ट्वेंटी पी एम तक लेके जा सकते हैं जी जी इन अब फोर थर्टी से हमने इसको कल कंक्लूड करना है ऑलमोस्ट इसको फाइव फोर थर्टी होगा फाइव थर्टी होगा फाइव फिफ्टी तक इन इसको हमने कंक्लूड करना है एज अर्ली एज पॉसिबल एक घंटा दस मिनट का लेक्चर लेंगे कल इसको हम न्यूरोलॉजी को कंप्लीट करेंगे फार्माकोलॉजी को आपके कोई भी कंसर्न होंगे वो फार्माकोलॉजी के वो मुझे आपने बताना है और इन नेक्स्ट मैं ग्रुप बनाऊँगा उस ग्रुप में मैं आप सबको ऐड करूंगा एक व्हाट्सएप का ग्रुप बनाऊंगा ठीक है और अभी मैं एक मिनट में नाम भी मेंशन लिख लेता हूं ताकि मेरे पास याद रहें अच्छा मुझे ऐसा करें कि जो डेली स्टूडेंट है ना मुझे वो व्हाट्सएप कर दें एक मैसेज में अपना नाम लिख के मुझे व्हाट्सएप मैसेज कर दें ताकि मैं उन स्टूडेंट को व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप के अंदर ऐड कर लूँ मुझे वो एक व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप बनाना है जस्ट टेक्स्ट मी फॉर द व्हाट्सएप ओनली फॉर डेली स्टूडेंट्स जो डेली स्टूडेंट्स आ रहे हैं उन्होंने मुझे जस्ट एक मैसेज करना है काफी स्टूडेंट को मैं खुद जानता हूं उनको मैं खुद ऐड कर दूंगा लेकिन कुछ न्यू स्टूडेंट जो आए हैं लाइक जैसे डॉक्टर मरवा है उनका मुझे नंबर नहीं आइडिया कि कौन सा नंबर है आ, मुझे वो कर दें डॉक्टर आमना याकूब का मुझे आइडिया है उन्होंने किया था डॉक्टर अवैस डॉक्टर अवैस से रिक्वेस्ट है कि वो कर सकते हैं मुझे मैसेज और बाकी डॉक्टर अली हसनैन और डॉक्टर आयजा का भी आइडिया है और ऐसे स्टूडेंट जिन्होंने मुझे कभी व्हाट्सएप नहीं किया मुझे व्हाट्सएप करें मैं उनको व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप में ऐड कर दूंगा उसके बाद हम इसको मजीद इम्प्रूव करेंगे अपने लेक्चर्स को आपसे फीडबैक भी लेंगे और आपसे कोई भी कंसर्न होंगे वो डायरेक्ट आपके व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप में मैं देखूंगा कि आप लोगों को क्यों मसले हैं थैंक यू सो मच गाइस थैंक यू डॉक्टर तारिक जमील थैंक यू आपने भी मुझे व्हाट्सएप करना है आपको भी व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप में ऐड करूंगा थैंक यू सो मच ओके जी टेक केयर बाय बाय फिर कल इनशाला हम इस चीज को कवर करेंगे फोर थर्टी पे और होप आप सारे ज्वाइन करें थैंक यू बाय बाय